Ever since I switched from macOS to Windows more than a decade ago for my personal computing, I have also left the whole ecosystem approach behind me. Gone were the days when all of my devices constantly talk to each other and the convenience that comes with such a setup. Since then my mobile devices have been living a life of solitude. My phone was, well, my phone that I used for doing phone things and my laptop was also more on its own, with the two of them barely talking to each other. And it's fine, it's not like I'm really missing something, but there are occasions when people use AirDrop or take a call on their MacBooks without ever touching their phones and you are left wondering, can I have that without going back to a Mac? Well, it turns out you can. And while a few manufacturers are trying the whole interconnected ecosystem approach, Samsung might have the most robust system in place, which I stumbled across when we did the review about their Galaxy Book 4s a while ago. So I asked them for a few more goodies and put together my full-on or Samsung setup. Before we discuss how all of these devices work together, how seamless the experience really is and whether it makes sense after all, let me walk you through what we are dealing with today. Of course, the two centerpieces of such a setup are the laptop and the phone. And in addition to the Galaxy Z Fold 6, I was also spending some more time with the Book 4 Ultra, betting on the Core Ultra 7 and the RTX 4050 Config. I already said it in our initial review, I actually really like this laptop. It's really quite good a combination of size and weight. The 120 watts OLED is amazing, both for content creation and consumption. The 80 watts RTX 4050 even covers some light video editing and gaming, making it a very nice jack of all trades computing companion. I just wish they would say goodbye to the 16 gig config for this one, and a 512GB SSD is also downright criminal considering the price. The Fold Z6 has received a lot of criticism in the past couple of months for falling behind the affordable competition, especially regarding its overall form factor. And yes, the Honor Magic V3, for example, is a lot thinner and I actually prefer the wider cover screen. But having used the Fold 6, I have to admit it's still a very good phone and also a very good foldable. And the increased thickness did not really bother me, to be quite honest. I also love the more boxy appearance and the overall industrial design. It feels incredibly solid and has a very satisfying feel when you close it or open it. This also brings us to the main attraction when you own a Samsung laptop and a Galaxy phone. You can connect the two with just a few clicks, as long as you are signed into the same Samsung account, use the same Wi-Fi network and have Bluetooth enabled. While your phone cannot do much with your laptop, the other way around basically allows you to control the fold with the Book 4. I found this to be incredibly convenient. Got a WhatsApp message and do not want to reach for your phone? Simply move your cursor over to your phone and use your laptop's keyboard to type your message. The Fold basically becomes a sort of second screen that is still running its own apps, but you can access everything with your laptop's inputs, which is simply amazing. You can also browse your favorite social media feeds without the need for additional apps on your laptop. And while scrolling felt a bit stuttery, everything else felt very smooth and seamless. But that's not all, the connection also opens up file sharing, so if you want to move a photo for example from one device to another, simply drag and drop. I know it's just a little thing, but it's so incredibly seamless and intuitive and it's also such a productivity boost if you need to transfer files between your phone and your laptop a lot. What bugs me a little bit is that your phone naturally locks itself after a little while. You can still easily access it by just moving over your cursor, but you would have to input your PIN or reach for the fingerprint reader. This makes total sense for security reasons, but I wish there was just a more streamlined way to do it. If you own a supported Galaxy Tab, you can also use that one as a second screen, but unfortunately I was not able to test this. Of course you can also answer calls and start them, which is also quite a nice touch and makes the interaction between your phone and laptop so much more convenient. This brings us to our secondary devices, which in our case today are the Buds 3 Pros and the Watch 7, and I must admit I like them both a lot. The earbuds especially impressed me with their sound quality and their noise cancelling. I am usually not the biggest fan of in-ears, but these sit quite well even during workouts. They also sound very balanced with a very tight and pronounced bass response, which I personally like a lot. As with all earbuds, the controls were not really intuitive to me, and I accidentally ended calls and stopped my music a lot when adjusting the fit of them, since you can do both by just pinching the lower ends. You can also change the volume by sliding along the tips, but to be honest I would rather just use the volume controls on my phone. 
As for connectivity, with Samsung's wearable app, you get instant access to every setting you can imagine. And you are also supposed to seamlessly switch between your phone and your laptop with these, but unfortunately that did not work for me, which was quite a bit of a bummer since that would also be quite handy for calls and media consumption. When it comes to smartwatches, I usually only really need or use them for notifications and as a fitness tracker. And before my little trial run with the Samsung Watch 7, I was using Huawei's Fit3, which needs its own app to run properly and is very limited in terms of overall functionality. But the battery lasts forever and it's pretty inexpensive for what it is. The Watch 7 is a proper smartwatch and while I had to get used to charging it every night or every second day, it was kind of nice to have the full experience again. You can answer calls, reply to messages, control your music, control your earbuds and have a ton of activity tracking options at your disposal. I also really like the look of the smartwatch, especially with this very comfortable light grey band and these blue and orange accents. And by the way, we reviewed this one in its entirety on the website, as we did with all the other products I just talked about. So please feel free to head on over to our written articles. I will put all the necessary links in the description below. So does it make sense to buy into a single brand for all of your devices? Well, in Samsung's case, it actually does. Especially if you look at the more mobile devices, such as your phone, earbuds and especially the smartwatch. You can of course use the wearable app on any other Android smartphone and get almost the same experience. But if you want it out of the box, well it does not hurt if all of your products share the same brand name. As for the laptop and smartphone connection, you can really only get this with a Galaxy Book. And while it would probably not completely influence my personal buying decision, if I were to make a decision between two equally specced laptops and one would give me the option to control my phone and seamlessly move files and photos between them, then I would definitely go for that experience in a heartbeat. But please folks let me know what you think, if this is something you look out for when shopping for new tech and how important it is for you that all of your devices can talk to each other. Sound off in the comments below. That should also be it for today. A big thanks for taking part in my little all Samsung experiment and make sure to check out our usual reviews before you head out and leave your like on this video if you felt entertained. If you are new here feel free to leave your sub, my name is Alex, you have been fantastic and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.